God has shown many times that he's not a God that leaves. He stays with us after creation and guides us through our life. The key to hearing his voice is seeking it. Moses heard God after looking for the burning bush. David sought God's guidance and was given it. Harriet Tubman likewise sought God's direction and was given it. And so here are the examples that I found. First Chronicles 14.14, 14, which is the first one up here. And David inquired again of God, and God said to him, You shall not go up after them. Turn away from them and come and go against the mulberry trees. So David is seeking God. He's trying to figure out what he's supposed to do with this battle. And God says, Don't go after them. Instead, go stand over here by these trees, and victory will be yours, basically. And victory was, as long as, you know, and David did his thing. So... That's an example of you seeking God. God gives you not only the answer, but then direction, because that's what David was seeking. Exodus 13, 17, the second one. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. Now, I thought this was interesting because here it is. He's guiding his people in the way where they won't be, um, I just had the word, now it's gone, <laughs> where they won't be discouraged. They won't become afraid. They won't look at this and go, no, life outside of slavery of Egypt is really crazy. I, I think I just want to go back. So I thought that was cool because this is God guiding us even when we don't really understand like we're in the middle, they're in the middle of following God. They're following Moses, who's following either the bright, uh, he's either following the cloud, what was it? They had a, a cloud in the, during the day, and I think light at night to follow. So they're following God, and God is saying, without them asking, God is putting this path in front of them that is leading them away from discouragement, from fear, and all these other things that could discourage them from doing what they should be doing or looking away from it. So I thought that was cool because I never noticed it before and I have noticed though that God will do this in my life. So I thought that was pretty nice. Acts 7, 32-33 After 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert <laughs> Excuse me, near Mount Sinai. When he saw this, he was amazed at the sight, and he went over to get a closer look. He heard the Lord say, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> Excuse me again. Moses trembled with fear and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals from the place where you are standing is holy ground. So Moses is in a way seeking God. And I'll explain to you what I mean by that. So he sees something amazing, something miraculous, right? He's been living in the desert for 40 years. He's been living with God's people, so he knows a bit about it. And then he sees something that his attention cannot be drawn away from, which is this burning bush that doesn't actually burn. So he goes to it. Again, he's seeking. He didn't run from it. A lot of people would just run from that because it's freaky, right? But he didn't. He runs. He goes towards it. And when he does, he hears the voice of God, which I think is awesome. Because if you think about it, there are things that I've seen and experienced in my life which are freaky. They don't make any sense. Um, science can't explain it, things like that. So in my search for what are these things, what do these things mean, it led me to the metaphysical, which is where religion and, and, and things like that live. That's where they're set. So if you're looking for God, if you're looking to understand what's going on in the world, he does appear. He's right there. And then he explains things to you, <laughs> which I also think is pretty cool. So I mentioned Harriet Tubman in the beginning, and I thought this is a cool uh, quote from her. She's trying to explain to people uh, how she got so many people through the Underground Railroad from the south to the north, where you could, where it was possible to become free. They did have slaves in the north, but you could become free there. Uh, and how she was able to get out of 
certain situations where she should have been caught, but she wasn't. So this is what she said. Twant me, twas the Lord. I always told him, I trust you. I don't know where to go or what to do, but I expect you to lead me. And he always did. So that's Harriet Tubman, and I got that from a book called The Christian's Treasury of Stories and Songs and Prayers and Poems and Much More for Young and Old, edited by Lisa Roche. And that's on page 40. I thought that was interesting, because you don't really hear too much about that when you learn about her. She did, she does, she is a Christian, or was a Christian, depending on how you look at it. And she used that faith in God, and God guided her. So this is, she came boldly to God, basically. I trust you. I don't know what to do or where to go, but I expect you to show me, right? So she trusted God. She was bold about it. She did not come in sort of like this idea of, of meek meagerness. She came forward to him saying, I know who you are. I know who I am. I expect you to help me. Let's do this, <laughs> basically. Which I think is cool because I think we've lost sort of that idea or we can go to God and say, I know who you are, I know who I am, we're in the proper, let's be in the proper respective places and let's do this. Instead, we seem to think there's like a, we're stuck sort of in this totally pious, all the time, can do nothing worthless sort of idea. But once we come to God and we are Christians, all of that sort of, all of that's supposed to melt away or not worthless God created us we weren't worthless beforehand see what I'm saying so it's a very bold way to go to God and as you can see it works and as you can see also in the rest of the Bible it also works so I uh, thought that was awesome myself and it was very encouraging and it keeps me from being like eh, why should I even talk about any of it because nobody cares people do care People watch us all the time. People watch Christians all the time. They don't always say so. They don't always admit to it. They don't always say, well, I watch you just to see what what's going on, what Christianity really is. Sometimes they're just like, I'm just seeing if you're going to mess up. And what that really is, is they, they're testing. They're testing. What is this real? Is it true? So it encourages me to stay with God. Well, no, not stay with God, because I'd stay with God either way. But it encourages me to say something about it. It encourages me to continue to share what God has done. And that's all I've got for today, guys. I know it is kind of short, and I try to keep them kind of short, because I know everybody has busy days and things like that. So that's what I'm trying to do. So 